In paint code 2, we found a much better way to integrate the generated code into your Xcode projects. This will save you tremendous amounts of time. In this paint code document, I have two icons in the first tab and another smaller icon in the second tab. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, the code for drawing these icons is already here. Just as in paint code 1, you can still copy this code, paste it into your Xcode project, and use it that way. But now we also have a much better way to do the code integration process. We call it Style Kits. Style Kit is essentially an Objective C class that contains all your drawings, colors, gradients, shadows, and other design assets, all in one simple, easy to use package. To access the Style Kit functionality, just click on the first tab here. This is essentially a catalog of everything you have in your Style Kit. There are already three drawing methods in the Style Kit, corresponding to the three canvases of the icons I showed you previously. And here, is the generated style kit code. As you can see in the interface of this generated style kit, this special class contains three drawing methods. These are all class methods. You can call these methods in Xcode very easily, and they will draw whatever you have placed in their corresponding canvases. Now let me show you how to integrate this style kit into a new Xcode project. So let's switch to Xcode and make a new project. I'll name it Style Kit Basics. Okay. First, I have to add the style kit class into this Xcode project. To do that, let's switch back to paint code for a moment. I'll change the name of the style kit class to my style kit and hit the export button. When the export sheet appears, make sure you have the first tab selected and click export again. I will now export the class into the directory of the Xcode project that I just created. And now back to Xcode. I will add the new files, these two. And finally, here is my style kit code. Now I will show you how to use this code to draw something. Let's switch to storyboard and add a new UI view here. I will make the UI view 300 by 300 points. Next, and this is really important, let's change the class of the UI view to PC view. This class does not exist yet, but I will create it right now. We'll choose Objective C class, subclass of UI view called PC view. Okay. Firstly, I must override the draw rect method, and secondly, import the style kit class here. Now I will simply draw the icons by calling the draw chat icon method on the my style kit class like this. Let's try it out. Here's our chat icon. I can very easily change this method called to draw paper plane and recompile it, and it will draw the paper plane instead. Okay, now I'm going to show you something else you can do with style kits. So far, I've only showed you style kit drawing methods, but you can also add a color to the style kit catalog. This is actually very easy. Just grab the color and drag and drop into the catalog. like this, and immediately you'll see that the color has been added to the public interface of the style kit class. It can now be easily accessed programmatically. Let's see how to use this color in Xcode. I'll add a new label to the storyboard here. Maybe I'll make it a bit larger. Okay, now I want this label to be the same color as the color I've just added to the style kit. Let's switch to the assistant editor and add a new IB outlet for this label. Here, in the view controller. Let's look at the implementation of the view controller. First, we need to import the style kit class here. Now I can just set the text color property of the label to the icon color provided by style kit.
Let's go back to paint code and just hit file export again. When I run the project again, the label is the same color as the icon. I will now go back to paint code again and change the color to green and re-export the style kit again. After recompiling everything in Xcode, both the icon and label are now green. So as you can see, the whole process of trying new things and updating colors in your drawings is very fluid with StyleKit. Okay, now I'll show you something else. I will switch back to paint code and show you the canvas settings. For each canvas, you can choose exactly what should appear in the style kit. By default, a drawing method is generated for each canvas, but you can also choose nothing, image method, or both drawing and image method. Let's switch this canvas to drawing and image method. In addition to the drawing method we used previously, this canvas now also generates another method called image of paper plane. This class method returns an UI image, which is a cached image of the paper plane icon. Here's how to use this in Xcode. I'll open the storyboard and add a new UI image view here, like this. Let's now switch to the assistant editor again and add another IB outlet for this image view. Before I use this IB outlet, let me just go back to paint code and re-export the style kit again. Here in the view controller implementation, I can now easily set the image property of the image view to the image of paper plane retrieved from style kit. When I run the project, you'll see the image plane icon displayed using the UI image generating method in the image view. And because AppKit actually uses UI images quite often in many of its APIs, this is really convenient. You just have to tell paint code to generate UI images from your canvases, and StyleKit will actually draw the UI images at runtime, cache them, and let you conveniently use them in your code. One more thing, there is a way to do some of these things visually in Storyboard. Let's return to the view controller here and remove what I just wrote because we won't be needing that. We'll do the same thing in Storyboard without writing any code. First, I will add an object here, which will be an instance of my style kit. As you can see, this style kit instance has an IB outlet called Paper Plane Targets. We can just connect this to the image view in the storyboard. When we do that, style kit will automatically call the set image method on the target using the paper plane UI image as the parameter. When I launch the app now, it works as before, but we've made everything work from storyboard. Let's go back to paint code and make this a little bit more complicated. I will change this chat icon to also generate the image method, like this. I will do the same for the location icon. Let's export the style kit again. Back in Storyboard, I will duplicate this image view. In the style kit instance here, you can see there are actually two new outlet collections available. One is chat icon targets and the other location icon targets. I can use them to assign the image here. Recompile it again, and it works. Now I'll show you one more thing. Let's remove this UI view and move these objects up. I will add a tab bar to the bottom of the iPhone screen here, like this. It's also important to change the identifier of the tab bar item to custom. I'll now connect the location icon targets to the tab bar item. Let's recompile everything. As you can see, the tab bar at the bottom of the screen now uses the icon that we drew in paint code. Let's return to paint code for a second. The generated UI image is now working in automatic rendering mode. I can easily switch it to original mode, and when I do that, re-export everything again and relaunch the app. The icon in the tab bar is finally green. Previously, AppKit used UI image as a kind of template when drawing the icon, applying default system effects. It's very easy to change the entire color scheme of what we've just made. 
I'll just change the color a bit again like this. Re-export the style kit again. Finally, when I recompile the project, you'll see the user interface change from green to red. And that's it. Thanks for watching.